So folks, I think the question that I'd like to ask today is there are a number of people that are running for public office that have had some role in January 6th and that riot that happened on the Capitol that day. I've got two of them here. This happens to be Chuck Hand. He's standing in front of the Capitol with his hand out like he's chopping it. Really creative. And this is his website. He's running in Southwest Georgia, by the way. And his website says, well, I stand up next to a mountain and I chop it down with the edge of my hand. And then he has Jimi Hendrix under it, which I don't think is a Jimi Hendrix quote, but um, in any event, his website also says Chuck Hand is both the grit and the backbone that it takes to stand up to the radical left. He and his wife Mandy attended the Stop the Steel rally in Washington, D.C. on January 6th of 2021 to protest peacefully. Peacefully. He and his wife were sentenced to serve time in federal prison for misdemeanor picketing charges. <laughs> protesting peacefully. They were nonviolent protesters who were made examples of by a two-tiered justice system, he says, and a weaponized Department of Justice by the Biden administration. So he was at a debate. Evidently, there's uh, a primary race that he's involved with against this other man named Johnson. And the primary evidently is for the candidate for Congressional District 2, according to what I'm reading here. And so he agreed to be there, right? So he goes and they're standing at the podium. And then one of the people asks a question of him, like usually happens in a debate, and it sort of just goes over his head. And he uses that as sort of like a springboard to say, you know, I'm not here to, to debate when he just obviously is there to debate. Does that make any sense? Well, here's how it went, folks. Jill Nolan, please ask your question to check hand. Hi, Mr. Hand. Um, Congress is currently working on a new farm bill, which it will have a big impact on the second district. What are your thoughts on the current House Republican plan? And specifically, would you support the controversial proposal to cut uh, food aid for low-income Americans? I'm Chuck Hand, lifelong resident of the second district. I've worked side by side with the people of the second district solving problems since 2018. I've only seen this man next to me come around when it's election time wanting to run for office. I've been wearing tires slam out in Southwest Georgia meeting with voters and building relationships in our communities for years now. I'm not interested in debating the issues of the second district with a man who doesn't even reside in it, especially one who orchestrates attacks on my wife. I'm more concerned about beating Sanford Bishop, representing you, and passing the America First agenda and putting Donald Trump back in the White House. This race is very simple. It's either 8th District money or 2nd District heart. The choice is yours. It's the dollar versus the change. Now, this is where I get back in my truck and head back to Southwest Georgia. Okay. Because I got two, way, two races to win. Thank you very much. Doug uh, Reardon. Hello. Uh, you're not staying, sir? Are you leaving? There he goes. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And folks, he's not the only one that's sort of holding himself out as someone who had something to do with the January 6th riots and, and claiming that's sort of like a badge of honor. The New York Times has this on the front page today. It's an article entitled, He Said He Was Ashamed of Storming the Capitol. Now He's Running for Office. Elias Irizarry participated in the January 6th riot. Now he's running for the legislature in South Carolina. And folks, I just can't help but... Uh, wonder what the heck sometimes is going on here. But the article says, I want to make it clear that I'm not running to make excuses or defend my actions, he told Judge Chutkin of Federal District Court in Washington. My participation in an event like January 6th has brought great shame upon myself, my family, and unfortunately my country. That was then. That's what he said back then. The article goes on to say, Today, Mr. Irizarry, a recent graduate of the Citadel, the renowned South Carolina Military College is mounting a primary challenge to a Republican in the state's House of Representatives. His website recently noted his prosecution for engaging in nonviolent activities at the Capitol on January 6th as proof that he's always stood for the conservative movement. That's, that's the proof, evidently. And it goes on to say that since then, Judge Chuckin, a Republican politician, and Republican politicians in South Carolina and the Citadel have grappled with the question of whether he deserves reproach or redemption, a question being asked in one way or another of many of the 1,200-plus Americans charged with taking part in the January 6th attack. 
Perhaps more important, Mr. Irizarry appears to bet that the primary voters would see his federal trespassing conviction as a badge of honor. Some clearly do. They quote one man, his name is Grant Martin, in his district, a retired property manager from Richburg, South Carolina, said he had not researched the race yet, but it, he said that given Mr. Irizarry's participation in the riot, I would be more apt to vote for him. And folks, there's a CBS News YouGov poll that was done in January that found the percentage of Republicans who approve of the January 6 rioters has risen to 30% from 21% in 2021. Among self-identified MAGA Republicans, approval stood at 43%. 43% approve of the January 6 rioters among MAGA Republicans. So folks, I think it's... Uh, we somehow have to push this ship of America back into common sense. And that's why I'm asking this question. Should they wear their participation in January 6th, whether they were there and were put in prison or not, just the fact that they were there and participated in that riot. The first candidate evidently was put in prison and you saw what the article said about the second candidate here. Should that be a badge of honor for these people? I mean, is that something to rave about and, and lift up like it's something fantastic? And I asked that question, um, you know, from the vantage point, I believe, of common sense. Is that, is that really, is that something that we should be doing as a nation, holding that up as a badge of honor? Just a question. Folks, thanks for joining me. Until next time.